Before I get into this video, I would like to apologize for it being so loud outside. I'm not sure if my camera is going to pick up on that. I assume it probably will. So my apologies, somebody's like driving a motorcycle. You hear that? Um, this is what I deal with every day. Uh, I, my street is very loud. So uh, I just wanted to do a little disclaimer. If you hear anything from outside, I'm very sorry about that. I hope that my camera doesn't pick up too much of it, but if it does, just understand that I live on a busy street. All right, <laughs> time to get into the video. When the word goth is mentioned, multiple things may come to mind. For some, the word goth immediately makes them think of gothic architecture. For others, the word may make them think of gothic literature. And for most people, the alternative subculture is what comes to mind. Before I dive into the history and music that made goth the subculture it is today, I will explain the origin of the term goth itself so we can further understand its usage, excuse me, its usage throughout the ages. 17th century scholars used the term gothic to mean Germanic or Teutonic. From the 1640s onward, Gothic was used as a term for the art style that emerged in Northern Europe during the Middle Ages. It's important to note, to note <laughs> excuse me, that the term had nothing to do with the historical Goths of Germany long ago. Horace Walpole was the first author to apply the word Gothic to a novel in the year 1764. Gothic literature first emerged in the late 1700s and remained popular throughout the first quarter of the 19th century. With Mary Shelley publishing her hit novel Frankenstein in January of 1818, Gothic literature was birthed in an era of political, societal, and economic turmoil, much like how the Gothic rock and post-punk movements were in the late 1970s and early 1980s. Now that we've cleared up the origin and meaning of the word goth, we can get into the history of the, goth, of the gothic subculture. The goth subculture was born in England during the early 1980s. It began with fans of gothic rock bands such as Bauhaus, Susie and the Banshees, and The Cure, to name a few starters. I'll continue speaking in a moment, but I wanted to include a clip of 80s goths for everyone watching as I found it interesting and fun and it could be educational for some of you watching this out. Though they obviously stand out from the crowd in distinct little groups, some aren't too fond of labels. Are you a goth? No. <laughs> Are you a no. purehead? Do you consider yourself a goth? Um, no, I suppose other people would, but I don't. Like, we just go for the more kind of vampire sides of things. <laughs> You're a goth as well, is that no, it? No, I'm not. <laughs> what are you? Um, nothing. Are you a goth? No. Are you a cure head? No. I couldn't afford uh, to buy new tights every time I went out because they get ripped very easily, so I decided just to leave them and you just, just rip and rip and rip. Yeah, and so that way they last much longer. <laughs> these um, rosary beads and yeah. why do you wear them? Well, the rosary beads are really classic goth jewelry. Mm -hmm. sort of, let me see ball. Yeah. <laughs> well, could you describe your look for me? Tell me, do you always dress like this? Um, yeah, it's just me on a normal day. <laughs> <laughs> well, where did you get everything? Tell me about the clothes. Um, this is my great aunt's cloak. I got this when I was in London. Um, Christmas present and my mum's t-shirt. <laughs> Tell me why you're wearing a rosary bead. A lot of you are and none of you have given me a satisfactory answer. Well, basically because it matches my brooch and I started wearing these ones and it annoys adults. <laughs> and you like to annoy adults? Oh yeah, they annoy us. <laughs> you, you want to look weirder than everybody else? Is that yeah, what you say? I suppose, yeah. You want, to, you want to just look different. You want, you know, your own look, really. Well, when I was younger, like about maybe two or three years ago, I would have been a cure head, you know, but like if you get more into it, like you want to be out of that because the cure heads now would be considered a bit of a joke, you know, they're just teeny boppy and they're only following one band, whereas like we listen to all that kind of music and all different things. Uh, what do you call yourselves? Gothic. What does that mean? Um, it's just the type of music we like and the way we dress and the makeup, like it's the whole effect. The Batcave was a weekly club night in central London from 1982 to its closing in 1985. 
Although the club was somewhat short-lived, it made a massive, massive impact on the music-based subculture that we know as goth. Many people who are unfamiliar with goth are unaware that the post-punk movement is what spawned the subculture that we know and love today. Before bands such as Bauhaus and the Sisters of Mercy, for example, came onto the scene, goth hadn't been its own subculture yet. Sure, macabre and dark things had been around before then, but not at this caliber. In 1979, the British band Bauhaus released what is considered the first ever gothic rock song with their first single, Bella Lugosi's Dead. The song alone has influenced countless musicians and has been extremely influential on contemporary goth culture and music. The modern goth subculture would be nothing without bands such as Bauhaus, Specimen, Susie and the Banshees, The Cure, The Sisters of Mercy, The Birthday Party, Joy Division, Depeche Mode, Christian Death, and Skeleton, and, excuse me, and Skeletal Family, to name a handful. In simple words, the music spawned the subculture. Black clothing and eyeliner doesn't inherently make someone goth. Since goth is a music-based subculture, it's about the music first and foremost. Looks aside. To be a goth, you must listen to the music and appreciate it, period. Many people unfamiliar with the subculture who may only have a surface level of understanding oftentimes will assume it's all about the clothing and makeup, which is false. The makeup and clothing is an extra fun part, but it isn't obligated to be goth as long as you listen to the music. Not every goth has the money and resources to dress the way they want to, and some people may be in a situation where they are unable to express themselves. This is common if you're under 18 and have strict parents, for example. Please know that just because you don't have the resources to look goth or aren't allowed to dress goth, that that doesn't invalidate you whatsoever as a goth, or excuse me, as goth is a music-based subculture. As long as you listen to the music, you're all set. Goth also, excuse me, I'm sorry I keep messing up. Uh, goths also don't have to only listen to goth music to be considered goth. The majority of us, I'd say, enjoy music that is nowhere near goth or post-punk, and that's perfectly fine since we already listen to goth music. As long as you listen to actual goth music, you can listen to whatever else you like on top of that and still be a goth if that makes sense. In the age of social media, I think baby bats, that's goth talk for new goths, regardless of age, if you didn't know. Nowadays, unfortunately, we'll oftentimes equate the way someone looks with their subculture, and you can't judge by, a, and, excuse me, and you can't judge a book by its cover in most cases. And I know what some of you at home are thinking. Why do labels matter? Isn't this just gatekeeping and you being an elitist? Absolutely not. Excuse me, let me silence my phone. I forgot to do that. Okay, it's on do not disturb now. <laughs> if there are zero, excuse me, if there are zero standards set in place for what a subculture is and is not, then the meaning of that subculture will become indistinguishable from other things. Labels aren't always good things, but when it comes to music-based subculture, they do serve a greater purpose. The goth subculture's purpose is to unite those with a love of the music and the darker side of life. And remember this, you do not need to be pale to be a goth, that's frankly a racist misconception. Anyone can be a goth regardless of their race, ethnicity, religion, economic status, etc. We, are, we also aren't all depressed, sure, some are, but it is sort of a stereotype that all goths are always miserable, which is untrue. Oftentimes, baby bats will assume that they need a lot of money to dress goth. When in reality, traditional goths of the 1980s DIY'd and thrifted a large majority of their wardrobes. Just look at Susie Sue, for example. She made undershirts out of fishnet tights for decades, and I do the same. I hope you all found this video informative and that you learned some new things along the way. I do plan on eventually making some affordable and or thrifted goth clothing DIYs as well as a few goth band recommendation videos and potentially a few makeup tutorials. I am very busy lately, but I would love to start uploading more regularly. 
If you would like to support me for only $4 a month on Patreon, the link for that as well as all the sources I used when composing this video will be in the description. Thank you so much for watching, subscribe to become one of my baby bats today, check out my Instagram if you'd like, and I will see you darklings next time. Much love! Bye! And before I go, I wanted to say a special thank you to my patrons Thomas and Joe on my Patreon for their support. Thank you so much. Alright, well, this has been the video. I will see you guys next time. Remember to leave a like on this and subscribe and turn on notifications if you haven't already. I really appreciate that. I hope everybody has a great day, evening, morning, night, whatever time it is, wherever you happen to be in the world. And I really hope that you enjoyed this video and potentially learned something new. Uh, let me know in the comments what you thought about this video. Uh, let me know in the comments if you learned something that you didn't know before. Um, I'll see you guys later. Bye!